Hi everyone, welcome to this Q&A call about authentic selling. Now, some of you watching this have read the book and some of you haven't, and you're welcome to watch this even if you haven't read the book, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, I've got a couple of, of uh, folks who have read the book here on the call, so thanks for joining me, Captain and Nikki and Will. Um, I didn't promote this event, <laughs> this particular event, as much as I, I could have. So it's uh, we got a small group here, but that's great. We maybe uh, can uh, talk about specifics of any of your particular questions and businesses and things that you're trying to sell. But let me start with a kind of a quick overview of what I think authentic selling means. Um, and I think it's probably best to contrast with conventional selling or the, tip, the way we're typically taught, or the way we think of selling is, is basically pushing something down someone's throat. You know, it's kind of how we, how we perceive selling, because that's when we think of a salesperson, we typically are a little bit avoidant of them because we know that they have an agenda, they want us to do something that we might not necessarily want, and we have the sense that they are trying to persuade us to change our viewpoint so that we can be aligned with them and then finally do what they want. So in other words, conventional selling um, has a, an element of manipulation to it. I, I know conventional salespeople probably wouldn't call it manipulation, but that's essentially what they're trying to do is to change your mind from where it currently is to being in favor of their product or their service. So authentic selling, uh, from my view, is basically being transparent about our intentions. That's one part of it. And so if you are transparent about your intention as a salesperson and you're using conventional selling, you'd be like, Nikki, I would like to manipulate you into buying my service. You know, is that okay? No, I don't want to be manipulated, George. Okay, well, that ends the conversation because transparency of intentions will end most sales conversations and most sales campaigns or whatever, right? But authentic selling that, okay, transparency, great. Well, then how can we be transparent and yet have people want to continue talking with us? Well, we could be transparent if we shift our intention. So really, it's about shifting our own intentions from one of coercion, essentially, to one of understanding and helping. And that's really what I think, and understanding, helping, and if there is alignment, invitation. So it's like, okay, Nikki, I'm not trying to sell you anything right now. What I'm trying to do is to understand, and there's a reason why we are in this conversation right now, Nikki. Let's say I was, let's say Nikki had read some of my blog posts or gone to my website and contacted me. So obviously in that case, she is, there's some interest already. So I basically say, well, Nikki, um, help me understand what got you interested. You know, why did you come to my website? What was the thing? That, oh yeah, you know, I, I read this blog post and I really liked what you said about that. And I was interested in, you know, getting better at this thing in my life or my business or whatever it is you help people with, I help people with, right? Uh, and it's, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so let's talk about that. So let's say Nikki wanted to talk about topic A that, you know, or problem, problem X, that's what she was most curious about. Then in that sales conversation, I would focus on problem X and, and try to help her, right? And in that helping, I'll, I'll get a sense of, are, is Nikki and I, are Nikki and I aligned with our values and aligned with our goals? And if it is, then it would be quite natural for me to invite Nikki to do further work together because it, it feels like a natural, organic kind of emergence of that connection and invitation. That's authentic selling. Now, I used an example of one single conversation, but you can kind of look at this in a larger sense of you and your audience, right? You're not trying to coerce or manipulate your audience into doing something, but you're, you're simply sharing helpful content, seeing what they're aligned with, and then doing more of that and inviting them to further work with you. So given that quick kind of primer on authentic selling, do any of you have any examples you wanna bring forth in something that you are wanting to sell more of? Uh, services, products, programs? Feel free to 
chime in. Sure. Well, hi. I'll jump in, but I also have a caveat that I'm <clears throat> I'm on uh, my my daycare duty at the moment with my amazing uh, sixteen month old baby girl. So if wow. she starts yelling, then I may have to pick her up if that's okay. That is that was that your baby or was that your cat? That's my baby. <laughs> great question. She does sometimes sound like a cat, but no, that was <laughs> it my sounded baby. like a meow. <laughs> yeah, I know. So cool. Um, pretty cute like that. Yeah. So, Will, tell us what you are, yeah, what you're working on promoting or selling. Yeah, so I'm having, um, or what, I, what I'm working on promoting and selling is I work with healers to shift from being part-time healers to being full-time healers. So that could be an osteopath or an energy healer or a life coach. It's the definition of healer is, is fairly, fairly broad. Yeah. Um, and what I want to sell more of is I'm creating a subscription service so that I can more deeply serve healers. That's lower cost that they can all afford, but that will also allow me to serve them more deeply. So it'd be around 67 or maybe $97 a month. So still affordable, but uh, it would have at least, you know, it'd have at least three video opportunities for me to be with interacting with them one-on-one -on -one, or sorry, as in a group setting, I uh, wouldn't have any one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and to do that, I, I offer free 25-minute um, uh, energy healing sessions because I'm an energy healer. And so I want to I wanna sell more of those. They're free, so it's not actually sales. But I'm having – where uh, my question for you would be – and that, that goes really well um, as, as I get in front of the right people. And those, those are very – as you were just talking about transparent sales conversations, that's exactly what I do. I, I say – you know, we're going to have this call. Uh, if you like what this is and what I do, I would love for you to consider working more deeply with me. And mm -hmm. at the end, I'm going to ask you two questions. Uh, one is, you know, how do you feel? Do you feel better, worse, same or different? And two is, would you like to work more deeply with me? Uh, and that's all that, that's my sales pitch. Like that's my whole sales pitch. Uh -huh. okay. And that is my whole sales pitch. There's, there's nothing else to it. Okay. So that part I'm clear on. But my question for you is how, how do I balance the short term sales strategy with the, what I would call the long game, because every, all of the content that I've read from you so far and, and what I've been able to read in the book so far, I would call that long-term, or like the, the long-term strategy of great blogs and great videos and finding alignment yeah. and building a tribe. You don't use yeah. the word tribe, but you know, building a following or a group of people yes. that are aligned. Um, but I also need to make money now. Yeah. Uh, right. So it's, right. it's that balance of how to, how to do that. Very good. Yeah, thanks for giving us some context. So actually, you know, first thing I want to say about the, the conversation you have with prospective clients, um, I, I don't feel like you actually need to let them know what the questions are in advance. Um, you know, I think that it is good to uh, frame the call as a, a sample energy healing session, you know, and if you say it's a sample, I think people get it. It's a sample, like, you know, you get a sample before you buy something. But I think, I think mm -hmm. saying that, hey, at the end, I'm going to ask you if you want to work with me might feel a bit intimidating to, to, to some people anyway. So, oh, there's, there's, your, there's your baby. I want to show this on the screen because that's, uh, that's the most yeah. difficult thing we'll see in this video. Right? She started tugging at my actual pant legs. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Sorry. So you, you feel that asking the wow, she, 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 people she, want she, to work. I was going to say she's very uh, videogenic. <laughs> you could you could start making videos with yeah. with her in your arms. <laughs> uh, I so, so. Uh, yeah, so um, no, I'll, I'll, yeah, so you're saying that to ask at the end. Oh, mm -hmm. oh hi. <laughs> so yeah, still in the show there, man. Yeah, at, at the end, I think it's totally cool to ask. But I, I, what I heard you say was that yeah. you should say what the questions are in the beginning, and oh. I, I don't. Think oh, <clears throat> sorry, I don't actually. I don't actually at the beginning. I, I, I was just, oh, okay. you know, in the excitement of being live on a video. But okay. no, I don't actually say that at the beginning. <laughs> okay, I, okay, I okay, good. have the session. And then okay, cool. The you, just, you just have the session at the end. And also, you know, I, I assume at the end, you only ask the question of, well, I think this is what partly authentic selling. You only ask, hey, do you want to work more together if you feel like it was a good session? Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and when, you, when it's a good session, there's a mutual feeling. And so the, the question becomes one that you're asking that they probably agree with too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, yeah. And so where I'm finding, sorry, you go. Okay. Oh, uh, so then, the, then your question is, well, how do we get more of those sessions? Is that right? 
Yeah, and so usually I have um, <laughs> thanks, Andy. Usually, <laughs> where where it goes really well is I I find eventually I'll connect with someone who's a real uh, center of a community, spiritual community, mm -hmm. and then they'll make a post, and then all of a sudden, twenty five people will say, "Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing!" And then I'm still having sessions with those people two months later because yeah. it's just that many people that came from that Brilliant. person. But then a lot of the people that I'm having sessions with are not those hubs. And I know Tad, you know, Tad Hargrave yes. very well. So yes. he talks yes. a lot about hub. Yes. And a lot of people are not hubs that way. And so they, um, either they don't get any attention in the, when they do their little testimonial on Facebook to say, Hey, I had this session. It was great. Um, comment below for a free one with Will. Um, they, uh, they either don't get any, any, uh, notice or they only get one or two. And this, at the moment, the system's in a bit of a lull or a dip because yeah. my big, hubs that I connected with were like two months ago and wow. that's kind of the flow has gone through. So I want to be more yes. reliable in how I connect with ideal, ideal yes. people that way. I, I love that you shared about the hubs. Those of you who are watching this, who don't know Tad Hargrave, his website is marketing for hippies.com. He's, he's amazing content there to check out. Um, yeah. So hub, a hub is like a person or organization that, is like a hub where there are spokes. I mean, they, they basically are an influencer. That's another way of putting it. They, they, they have an audience. And when, when a hub or when an influencer blogs about Will's service, well, then naturally their audience are more interested in, in uh, hiring Will or having sessions. So Will, the, my, the, my, I'm, I love that you share that because one of the things I always talk to clients about is I always find out, okay, first of all, let's find out what's already working. Like, What's a lot, a lot of times we do stuff and the, the, the stuff that's working, we don't do consistently. And that's part of our problem in not continuing to have prospective clients. And so Will, are you consistently reaching out to hubs or potential hubs? No. And I, I've been thinking about this for a little while now, but I don't, so the, the reason why I love the system that I'm using is because people naturally will self select and say, Oh yes, because I saw this post about Will. I'd love to have a session. They reach out, and then if they happen to be a hub, great. But if they're not self-selecting, <clears throat> and I'm reaching out to say, "Hi, I noticed your." It just it seems so. I've done so much work in my own energy practice to never have an ulterior motive. So yeah. So to reach out and say, "I'd love to offer you a free session," honey. That's but okay. they know, and I know in the background that what, what my end goal is to have them post on Facebook and say that they had a session with me. What if so that feels that? just automatically the energy goes off for me? What if you said that? What if you said, Hey, I'm reaching out to bloggers or whatever you're reaching out fan, Facebook fan pages who have an audience of people who could really benefit from energy healing or whatever you want to say, how you want to say it. And I'm wondering if you would be interested in, <laughs> an exchange uh, if, if I would love to actually gift you with one or two, you know, you could say, I mean, if, it, if, the, if the page is large enough, if the blog is large enough, you could say two or three even. I'd love to gift you uh, or somebody who is, you know, one of your, a, fr a friend of yours or family member, if they could really benefit from it, gift you with energy healing. And in exchange, you would honestly share your, your review on how it went for you. What do you think about that? Well, I'm glad you're recording this so I can write down what you said. Yeah. Because <clears throat> um, when, when you say it out loud, it, that feels good. Yes. But no matter how many times I tried to write it out as a, as a written message, it just felt, just felt off, which is why okay. I do most of my work uh, through video and not through blogging or writing. It's, it's, right. It's mostly, uh, it's yeah. most spoken because then there's less uh, miscommunication. Yeah, totally. Um, I was going to say your, your, your daughter's kind of like my cat, you know, trying to get, trying to get attention by like <laughs> flapping things around. <laughs> um, so, um, A little bit. yeah, so, so, uh, no, I, I, I think, I think that if you, you know, watch this back later, and if you felt the energy was right, try to write a, an imitation from that energy. And, you know, here's, here's the other thing that's helpful to start with is if you can imagine the person and ask, tell me if you can, can you imagine the blogger or the Facebook page owner or whomever influencer you're reaching out to Instagram person who 
either has been curious about energy healing or maybe has done some energy healing and actually is a fan of it. They're either curious or they're a fan of it. And so if someone were to reach out to them and offer them free energy healing for an honest review, they might say, I'm, I'm a fan of it or I'm curious about it. Sure, I, that sounds great. I'm glad you reached out. And number one, can you imagine someone like that? Number two is that, well, let me ask you that question first. Can you imagine or can, have you come across people like this? Yeah, well, those, <clears throat> those are the people that have already been hubs. But it's okay. exactly that. They're not energy healers exactly. They're either emotion, core emotional work people or go. life right. coaches. Those are the ones that have already come across. Yes, so re related service providers, related content providers. So here's the important, sort of before you write the message, is to understand that the person you're writing to, the person that you're literally writing that message to, is already accepting or is open. And is uh, so this a lot of times the reason why selling goes wrong is because the seller starts with the assumption that the other party is going like this. Well, I, I already don't like you. Uh, I already don't trust you. So now go ahead and tell me what you got. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, you're already wasting my time. So go ahead now. Tell me what you want. Right. And so so of course, from that energetic you know, initial assumption, connection, it's going to turn into manipulation or coercion or, you know, whatever, you know, un unpleasant feelings that happen and it's going to feel off. But if you're, if you're like, oh, Will, um, I'm so glad you're posting about, you know, emotional healing or whatever it is. And I'm wondering, have you actually, have you experienced energy healing? I'm, I'm really curious about it. And what are your thoughts about it? Because I'm reaching out to um, folks who would like to experience what it's like and and write about it on their honest opinion you know so how does that how does that feel yeah that it, it feels better than it's <clears throat> than it's been feeling and okay. uh, yeah because I've, I've been wanting to have clear and that, that was my my actual question for you and we it's funny how we've we've come to it is how to do the while I'm still building the long term and making my videos yes. and my blogs and all yes. that jazz, but also have daily actions that I can do in the short term right. to increase the system that I'm doing that's already working, which is what we're now talking about. So yes. that is the short term is to identify hubs that are similar to the ones I've already found or ones yes. that I think would be great. Yes. And then approach them with a similar kind of script for lack yeah. of a better term than what you right. just used. And then the only thing I'll, I'll add is, is to keep the system going is that when they write that honest review, uh, or if they're open to it, writing that honest review, than to say um, that any of their tribe who comments below can also get a free session with me. That's so I want to make sure that that's in the, in add that. that's, that's part of it. Yeah, because that's a, that's a, that I'm so glad you mentioned, because then it's a, well, it's win, 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 right? It's a, it's a win for the influencer, the hub to receive it and to create content out of it. So it's, you know, if they're a blogger or their content provider, they, they want to find ways to create content that's interesting for people, right? And that this would be in it. Like any kind of personal experience is always interesting content for one's audience. Hey, this is what I just experienced. Let me tell you about it. Okay, so number one, that's a win for the influencer. Of course, it's a win for you because you get exposure and more potential clients. And so it's a genuine win for the audience. They get to read about it and they get to experience it themselves. So it's a, it's a really nice kind of, okay. So I love that. Now, one thing you could do to take to the next step and amplify it. Okay. It, you mentioned that, oh, when some people have written about it on their Facebook profile or page or whatever, you know, I only got two comments or something. The way to amplify it is if it's a positive review, especially if it's a positive review and, and, and they have a Facebook page, you can say, Hey, would you be willing? Can I pay you 20 bucks for you to do, to, to boost that post for 20 bucks to your audience? That makes sense. Um, <clears throat> I think so. It's just my baby girl got close to the stairs, so I had to go grab her. Yeah. Um, so I would be paying the money to boost their posts so that it reaches you, you more would, people. You would be paying them the money for them to boost a post so it reaches more of their their audience, if their audience, not just random audience members, but just boosting it to their own fans. So that I mean, for really, I mean, gosh, oh. let's say a Facebook page has two hundred fans, right? I mean, you could pay mm -hmm. probably $5 or $10 and certainly, actually probably $5 will reach all 200 or not to the 200, probably several times, in fact. So probably $10 will reach the, most of the 200 two or three times. 
So I'm paying to boost their post of their review, which helps them because they reach more people, but I'm yeah, they, paying for the advertising. That piece of content. I, I win, obviously. People. Yeah. And, and you know what? Mm -hmm. And if you feel like they're open to it, now this is not uh, appropriate for everyone, but if you feel like they're open to it, like they, they seem entrepreneurial, you could say, hey, listen, here's what I'm going to do. If any of your uh, clients or audience members sign up with me, like they'll do, do the free session, of course. And if they end up working with me, I'd love to, you know, uh, get, you know, buy you, uh, buy you your certificate for 25 bucks or whatever, or like 50 bucks, whatever, whatever kind of gift. Like, hey, I'd love to buy you a massage, you know, as a thank you or something or, or dinner out. You know? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what, what you've started to highlight is, and sorry for the change of scenery, I have to sit on the stairs now because <laughs> no my baby girl for months has not had any interest in the stairs except now to get my attention. Uh, <laughs> to get our attention. Dad, she, she hashtag knows dad for audience now. <laughs> exactly. So what you started to highlight was the, um, what are the potential benefits for the people that I'd be approaching? Because that's where I was getting stuck. Because I mean, obviously having a free energy clearing session is very beneficial because I've had people with just one session get like, you know, they sign new clients the next day or yeah. their strange uh, family member reaches out, you know, like big yeah. shifts happen. So that's, that's a benefit. But um, you started to mention when, you know, if they're content providers having any kind of experience to write about that, that's a huge bonus. So maybe I just do a little bit of a brainstorm of all the different potential benefits that there are for the, the people that I'm reaching out to, like the hubs that I'm reaching out to in the hopes that they have that, that they kind of hit some of the things on that list. Is that, am I on the right track there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And here's the thing, like you're going to keep improving that outreach message as you go, right? So it's not going to be the same mm -hmm. templated message for everybody for forever, but it'll be like, hey, I, I, I reach out to 10 potential influencers with this message. And then, you know, hey, I got three responses. Great. The next batch of 10, I'm going to see how I can tweak the message based on the responses I'm getting, maybe some questions I'm getting. I mean, let me tweak the message so that it's even, it's even better. Now, now here's the thing. Outreach messages, there are two types, right? There's long type and there's the short type, okay? The short type is meant to start a conversation and then, you know, back and forth messages until you kind of answer all the questions. The long type is basically like, I'm assuming you don't have much time. So you'd rather just have all the information right now in this initial message. I have received both types. Personally, I like the longer type because I don't have time to like go back and forth with someone to figure out that this is something I want to engage with. I just want the whole thing there. But I have also noticed that some people I've reached out to really like the short type. So that's the other factor for you to test in mm -hmm. outreach is let's, let's try t long for 10 people and short for, ten, for the next 10. And let's look at the stats. And this is important to start tracking what the response rate is as you tweak these things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So cool. Great. Well, Will, I uh, look forward awesome. to hearing how it goes. And, uh, you know, here, here's what we'll do. Where I post this video, uh, I'll let you know where it is. And you can feel free to comment below if you want to update us on how things are going or, or, or any other insights that came to you as a result of this. How's that? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, cool. And awesome. uh, <laughs> what, what, is your, what is your baby girl's website? Because we want to go and see more pictures of her now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Her name is Maeve. She doesn't have one. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. You should, get her appreciate it. you should get her domain name, first and, first and last name, right away. Secure that. Because uh, <laughs> she is going to be an Instagram influencer before long. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so, now what's your website? So that Thank you, George. Can, uh, folks can follow. Oh, uh, yeah, it's myspiritualclarity.com. And right there, if, if anyone that watches this wants to get one of those free sessions I talked about, then the button's right there, and you're welcome to take me up on it. Awesome. Thank you. Well, great. All right. Yeah. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll, I'll mute myself now. So okay. You're maybe in the background. That's great. So uh, welcome to those of you who have joined us and um, now open to whatever questions you want to ask regarding as you think about having more people um, understand, see, understand, and buy your service 
product or program? What's coming to mind? What would you love to do more, apply authentic selling to? And those who are watching this later, feel free to comment below. I won't be able to do a, the in-depth coaching that I did with Will, of course, uh, in, in the comments. But uh, if there's a blog post that comes to mind that I've, that I've written, I'll certainly comment on your comment to, to let you know something that can help you. But does anyone else want to share? Ruth, hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I've been wondering about the, the kind of highlight message in the front of my website mm -hmm. and whether it should be more specifically directed to one um, issue or context or more open in general and and that's not very clear to me so mm. um you know there's different doorways that people can get into my website and and or to my work and and um i'm yes. used to responding to all these different demands yes. but yes. right now i have to make a choice on the first thing that people see on the top yes. of the website and yeah. i'm not sure yeah it is and that's uh that's a it's, it is a challenging question because that is the most important page on your website is the home page and that is the first impression. So uh, I appreciate that question. So later we'll definitely want to have you share your website and maybe if it's appropriate, we could take a look and, and give our feedback maybe, but uh, I'll just kind of give a general, some guidance that I think is helpful. Um, the best answer to the question of what should go on any web page, in my opinion, the best answer is to split test. <laughs> you know, and you might be expecting that if you've gone through any of my trainings, um, because ultimately your visitor is the one who is the decision maker. And the only way to know what your visitor is thinking is to watch what they do. And so, when you send a hundred, when a hundred visitors come to your homepage, what happens after that? What do they do after that? That is the question. What page do they go to? Do they jump off? Do they click on the button you expected them to? Do they go to another page on your site? Of course, to, to understand the journey of your actual visitor, uh, everybody I recommend install Google Analytics. Um, that is a free software and everyone should, I think everyone should install it because it gives you that, that journey uh, without you having to do anything else, that data starts to collect and you start to understand the average visitor, where they go and what happens and, and you know, 20% go there afterwards. Oh, 40% go there. Well, that's interesting. I didn't expect that. How can I then shape my homepage to more click? If I, if only 20% of people or, or 3% of people are going to the page, I want them to go from the homepage. Well, how can then, you, if you have that information and you notice that 30% are going to this other page, say, well, why is it that so many more people are going there? Is it because they're looking for that? Well, they probably are. So how can I then shape my homepage to give an invitation, a clearer reason why they should visit that page that I want them to go to? maybe the button needs to be clearer or maybe there needs to be a why you know, you're here because of this reason or you're probably here you probably found this website because of this well if you are looking for that here's where to find it you know and so google analytics is definitely should be installed if those of you who are fascinated by this want to dig into it i do have a course online course showing you how to use google analytics how to install it and use it so you can understand these things for your own website um and then i talked about split testing so now we go you know in ruth's case like okay well Ruth said, well, I could say this, or I could say that. And so Ruth, that's what I would want to know, first of all, or to, to determine is give us a couple options. Like I could, I could emphasize this, or I could emphasize that. Once you come up with two or three or even four options of what you could emphasize, then you would use split testing to randomly, automatically direct your visitor to either version A of the homepage or version B or version C or version D. And the tool that does this for you for free is called Google Optimize, yet another Google tool. It's optimize.google.com. 
in that same course I mentioned about Google Analytics, I also teach how to install and use Google Optimize. So, uh, you know, and it's easy, it's relatively easy to do actually. So you, you create four different versions of your homepage, you simply clone it, you have a different message there, and then after a month or after, you, know, you basically wait until there's at least 100 visitors that have gone to your homepage, and then you analyze your, st your, your stats and say, whoa, this isn't that interesting. That version B sent more people to the, the, the page I want to go to. Oh, inter interesting, version A had the highest bounce rate. People went there and they left. Oh, oh version D had a, uh, had, a, had a pretty good you know, direction to the page I want them to go to. So apparently version B and D are the most successful ones. So let's continue using those two versions, and let's now let's now create another version, you know, version you know version E. Now that's going to be B and D and E. Now we're going to be testing to see what's more effective now. So you keep on you keep on testing. You keep the ones that are working or the one that's working the best, and then you you create another version based on your understanding of what didn't work and what worked. Let's try another one. And so this ongoing split testing you can do it for as long as you want. It could be forever going, or it could be just be, all right, I'm going to try three months of split testing different things until I decide, until I see from the data what's working the best. Does that make sense, Ruth? It does. And, and, however, one of the things that I've learned with uh, looking at Google Analytics as well over the years, and, and especially having... Uh, WordPress websites that do have a lot of good meta descriptions and all of that is that any page can be a landing page. Yes. Uh, yes. So people come in uh, through searches and they land on different pages. Yes. And from there, they don't necessarily go to the home page. They might follow a link within the text yeah. to that page and so on. Yeah. And so, you know, this whole reasoning assumes that everyone is going to land on the home page and that's not that, no really I'm, glad, I'm glad you thing. you yeah. uh, mentioned this you can apply the split testing to any of the pages so my question then is based on your google analytics what are the top three to five landing pages that people people come to your site because those, yeah, it could be that your homepage isn't the most popular landing page. It could be the, your blog post on XYZ was the most popular one. So now that we know that, we could apply split testing to that blog post to say, you know, I want people after they read this blog post, I would love for them to contact me uh, about potential services or, or, you know, or, or I want them to then read this blog post or whatever it is you want them to do next. Then you would split test to say, all right, let's try two different messages to invite them to contact me and let's see which one which button you know or should i have it to closer to the top or in the middle of the blog post it could be either one maybe that'll be more effective so i would encourage you i mean and do it one at a time you know i know split testing if you do too many it gets to get confusing and you're, you're trying to analyze too many things at once so just try one landing page at a time that's the most important one you know so maybe also uh, use the hint of, okay, a lot of traffic is coming in through this page. Maybe this is the subject I should highlight because this is kind of popular. Maybe, uh, maybe. maybe. Uh, although there is a reason, it could be that, that blog, a lot of people land on that blog post or that page because some other influencer had posted about it. And so it's not necessarily what, more, what your average ideal client should be seeing as the first message. So sometimes that's the reason, or sometimes I have the, I'll tell my own example, my most popular video, hands down every single year is my tutorial video about how to use zoom. It's, I mean, I have over, I think by this point, I think getting close to 200,000 views uh, in, in one year for, for that video. And, and so that, I could say, well, gosh, I should go into business teaching people how to use zoom. That should be my homepage. Well, that's not, it just so happens that's the one, you know, and some people do, some ideal clients do find me through there, but most of the people watching the video are not my ideal clients, you know, they just want to learn how to use Zoom and I just, it's a tool I love. And so, anyway, so does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thanks that for asking. These are good leads. Yeah. So, um, 
Nikki asked a related question, which is how do you set up different URLs, you know, for the different versions for your split testing? So in Google Optimize, one of the split testing options is called the redirect split testing option. And so if I were testing my homepage, I would literally clone my homepage and then I would make it, you know, um, Al, you know, Nikki, your website's Allegria Partners, right? So allegriapartners.com slash home one, allegriapartners.com slash home two, you know, and however many versions you want. And then you would tell Google Optimize, all right, Google, when people land on allegriapartners.com, please randomly send them to home one or home two or home three. And Google Optimize will do that. You know, once you plug in the code, it'll automatically direct people. So, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so we've got uh, about 20 so minutes left and I welcome any of you to chime in about something you would love to sell more of, services, products, programs, and let's have a conversation of how you can sell more of them. Okay, so Captain has a follow-up question. This is, does it display home one and home two to the clients? So the things, yes, I mean, if I were visiting your website and you set up split testing, I won't know that you're split testing. I'll just be visiting your website normally and I will probably not even notice it's, you know, well, Captain's website is ultimatelyfulfilledlife.com. So I wouldn't even notice ultimatelyfulfilledlife.com slash home too. I would just assume that, well, I guess Captain decided that his homepage is called home too. I don't know. I mean, but most people won't even, uh, you know, care or, or, or notice those things. So. But yeah, so once I land on home two, let's say you were doing split testing and I'm a visitor and I, I, I was randomly directed to home two on your site. Once that happens, the next time I visit your site, I'm also, Google will know, oh yeah, it's that IP address, the same IP address, it's gonna direct me to home two again. So it'll, it'll make it consistent so that you know, I'll, I'll be seeing the same version uh, as, as the same IP address, you know, with one IP address. So. But of course, if you want uh, a certain group of people to, to see home, let's say you want your own clients to say, clients, I want you to see home two only, then you would give them that link, ultimatelyfulfilledlife.com slash home two, you would give them that link. And then Google Optimize will say, well, that wasn't a, that, that link wasn't a test link, so we're not gonna direct people anywhere, we're just gonna take people to home two. So you, you tell Google Optimize, what is the URL you want people to be direct? Like, what's the, what's, the, what's the traffic light? And the traffic light would be home, or slash home, or, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, oh, people land on slash home. Then we will direct people to home one or home two. So, yeah. I know it's probably a little bit more <laughs> technical details about split testing than you were expecting, but I uh, hope that's helpful to those who are interested in that. So would anyone else like to share anything about their business or their product or service? We have a couple more minutes or we can also uh, finish early as well. That's the other option. Great, so thank you for being a part of this q and I hope this has been useful to those who are also watching. Uh, I look forward to your comments below. Feel free to let me know what was useful to you from this q and and, uh, any question you have, you know, comment below. I won't be able to answer in depth necessarily, but I probably have written a blog post that will give you some guidance around it. So, or maybe I have a course that I can direct you to. So thank you everybody. And I wish you success, true success, as you apply authentic selling to your business and you'll feel great about it. That's the, that's the, that's the key is you know you're doing authentic selling when you feel good doing the selling and doing the marketing. And you'll also know you're doing it right when your audience feels good about it. So that is where we all need to go and hope we can all go because then businesses are going to be more successful and everyone wins, the audience, consumers, the audience members, customers, clients, and yourself. So, all right, everybody, wishing you a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye-bye.